Hello everyone, Luke here from Pretty Tutor, and in today's tutorial I will teach you how to set up a grass within Unreal Engine 5. Also, I'm thinking of creating more detailed version for this foliage material, let me know in the comments if you'd like that. So first things first, we're gonna need to get ourselves a grass texture. If you want these ones, you can download it for free from the links down in the description below. But basically, what I did is I made sure that the grass itself originates from the bottom of the texture map as well as it's being set up with a PNG format that includes an alpha layer. So if we turn on RGB values, we'll see that the alpha will show up and that's what we need for our grass. We hop over to Photoshop real quick. All I did was make sure that the grass is aligned to the center of our texture map as well as I did a bit of grading just to make sure that the color would fit for what I'm going for. And then I also made sure that there's no background in the back. Once everything was done and ready, I clicked File, Export, and Quick Export as PNG to save it out as PNG file. So once we have that sorted, we're now going to need ourselves a plane. This plane can also be found in the description down below. But basically all that we need is a plane that has multiple vertices. So if I just zoom into it and get myself to a wireframe, we'll notice that it's not a single plane, but instead it is split into four by four. So we'll need these vertices for the movement of our grass. So all I did within Blender was basically, firstly, I'll subdivide my mesh. So it'd be into four by four pieces. And then I also made sure that my original point would be at the very bottom of a plane. And then I rotated my plane to be 90 degrees. So it'd be completely vertical and would allow us to place the grass foliage right onto our terrain without the need to rotate it. Right, now that we have this sorted, we're now going to set up ourselves a material for the grass. And so let's go ahead and right click in a content browser and create new material. Let's call this grass mat. So I'm going to double click on it to open it up. And now before making the grass material itself, we're going to need a couple of things. So we'll need to change some parameters for the material itself. And the first thing that we'll do is we'll make sure that the two sided is enabled. This will allow our plane seen from both sides instead of right now, if we rotate it, the other side is not going to be visible. So we need to make sure we enable two sides to be able to use a simple plane like that for our grass. Also, we'll also need to change the blending mode from opaque. We'll need to change it to masked. A translucent would also work. And instead of enabling the opacity mask, it would enable ourselves the opacity lay instead, which would help us get a nicer transition for the material. However, in this case, since we're using a foliage, it would give us a better performance to use an opacity mask instead. So I recommend you using that. So now that we have our material set up, we're going to need to get ourselves the textures for the material itself. So for that, all we're going to do is import a texture into the graph like so. And we're going to set up the RGB to the base color. Then we're going to set up the alpha to be used as an opacity mask. We're going to get this sort of result. Right away, this looks pretty nice already, but by default, it'll be way too glossy, way too shiny of a material. So for that, we're going to hold one and click on the graph using our left mouse button. We're able to create ourselves a float value, which we can connect to the roughness. And then right away, we're going to change it from zero to a value that's close to one. So let's say we can change it to a value of 0.8. I think that'll look quite nicely. That'll look quite nicely for us. Since the closer you get to a value of one to roughness, the less shiny the material will be. With that done, if we want to make ourselves multiple variations of grass, we're going to need to change the texture sample to be a parameter. So by right clicking on it and setting it to convert to parameter, we're able to change this name. We'll call this texture. 
click enter. And now once we're going to be creating a material instance, we'll be able to change the material for the grass. Next step that we need to do is get some movement for our grass. But before doing that, we need to tell where the grass is actually planted on. So there wouldn't be any movement from within its origin. So for that, let's go ahead and firstly click Ctrl and S to save out our material. And we're going to close this down for a bit. So now with the material done, we're going to go ahead and apply this onto our plane by simply dragging and dropping it onto our plane like so. Now to color the vertices, we're going to go into the select mode. We're going to click on mesh paint. And now with this selected, the first thing that we want to do is make sure we erase all the vertex color. And for that, we're going to use the fill bucket. But in order to access it, we need to go into the paint brush. With this enabled, we're now going to be able to select the fill bucket like so. We're going to switch out the colors between the paint and erase color by clicking on this button next to them. So by clicking on this, and it's going to fill out the entire section black. If you're not getting the same results, make sure that the channels are selected for red, green, and blue. So just in case it would remove all the vertex color like so. We're going to go into our color view mode, make sure it's set to off. So we'd see which way our mesh is facing. So knowing that, I'm going to go into the red channel, since we're going to be using red channel for now. And this time we're going to make sure that the channels are only set to red. So I'm going to disable the green and the blue one. Then for the strength, we're going to set it to 1, just so we could get more consistency while painting over this mesh. And now we're going to set our color back to white by switching this button over here. Or if you're not having the same color, you can always go ahead and drag this all the way up and saturation all the way down to get a pure white, like so. Now with this done, we're going to drag across our mesh, like so, to get the bottom of it selected, to get all these vertices painted red. If you're not able to do that, make sure that with Select Tool, your mesh is selected. So with that, we're going to be able to paint all the bottom vertices to basically tell, to basically allow us within the material to tell that all this painted area is not going to be able to move. Then the next thing we want to do is we want to get some transition from red vertices to black vertices or where the movement is. So for that, we're going on to the paint color. And this time we're going to set this value to a grayer area. We're going to use this, we're going to use value number and actually set this to point 0.3 like so. Click OK. And now with this selected, we're going to want to select the second row of our mesh. So I'm just going to click and hold, and drag it out just like that. Now you see how there's a much nicer transition, which we're also going to be able to make use out of. If your brush is too big, by the way, you can always change your brush size from the brush menu and underneath the size. But we only want it to be a small one and to be able to select one vertice at a time to have more control over our mesh. Now that we're done with the painting, we're going to go ahead and apply this onto our static mesh. So for that, we're going to click apply button over here within the mesh painting tab. So let's go ahead and click on it, click continue, and this will make sure at our plane, we'll have some doo -doo -doo -doo, vertex color. We'll have some vertex color applied onto it, like so. This will make sure that the static mesh itself has the vertex color and not just an instance within our level. So now with that done, we can now go ahead and add some motion to our grass. So we're going to go back onto the select mode to go out of the vertex painting mode. Now we're going to go back into the material that we had ourselves before. Let's double click on it. And so to make a quick and easy motion for the grass, we're going to right click and search for wind. 
so a simple grass wind like so by making use out of a simple grass wind note we're going to make a nice motion for the grass so for that we'll need to get some values first and so first things first we'll need to tell the intensity for the wind so let's hold one and left mouse button on our graph to create a node and for this value we can set this to 0.1 then for the wind speed we're going to click one and on the graph with left mouse button we can set this to 0.8 we don't really need to make use out of the waving so we're going to set this to zero like so now for the wind weight this is where we're going to tell where the stem of our grass is so for that we're going to use vertex color to tell this apart so let's right click and search for vertex color and since we used a red we're going to use red for the wind height however by using this as is we'll be basically telling the grass to move or where we paint in red so instead what we're going to do is drag this out and search for one minus and this will give us one minus x which will basically reverse the color and with this we can now put this into the wind height the other thing that we need to do is set up that the grass its motion would be also based on the scale of a grass so for example for larger stems there would be more wind and motion to it and for the small ones there would be less of it so for that we're going to right click and search for object scale object scale this one over here and we're going to now connect this with simple grass using a multiplier node so let's hold m on our so let's hold m on our graph let's click left mouse button and now let's connect both the result of the simple grass as well as the object scale which is going to be also attached with xyz values and with this done we can finally connect it to the world position offset which controls the way that our vertices move so with this done we can go ahead and click ctrl s to save out our grass now we're going to get ourselves some motion for the grass we want to we want this to be applied directly onto our 3d plane so we're going to double click on our 3d plane and we're going to drag our grass material into the material slot like so this will give us this sort of result we can now go ahead and click ctrl s to save it now to make ourselves the variations for it we're going to make ourselves the material instances from this grass material that we just created so let's go ahead and right click click create material instance and for this material instance we're going to apply ourselves the second grass texture that we had so let's go ahead and enable this texture and simply drag it and drop it into the tab like so now we can click ctrl s to save it close this down and we're going to repeat this same for the grass free since we have already a material instance out of this material we can simply click and select on it and click ctrl c and ctrl v to duplicate it so for this one we're going to apply grass free like so click ctrl s to save it now we'll need multiple static meshes for this to work to have multiple variations so we're going to select ourselves the static mesh we're going to hit ctrl c ctrl v to make a duplicate out of it and we're going to click ctrl v again to make yet another duplicate so now we can select the copied meshes and apply the different material that we just had the different material instance by simply clicking and dragging it into the world like so and then the second one as well there you go now that we have multiple variations of the grass uh, we might as well rename them so let's click select on it click f2 and we can call this grass 01 variation 01 like so then for the next one I select it click f2 grass variation 02 
the other one brass variation of three so now we have three static meshes with different variations of grass now what we can do is go into the select mode change it to foliage we're going to drop our foliage in here so with three of them selected by holding control we're now going to be able to drag our foliage inside and let's make sure that all of them are selected with all of them selected we're now going to need to make use out of the density painting so with this by default if we were to just simply paint it onto our terrain our density would be i'd say quite low so what we can do is firstly make sure that the brush paint density is set to one and also you can change the brush size right now i just want it to around 500 so it wouldn't be too big but anyway to make it more dense we're going to be changing the density for grass to make it look way more dense we're going to expand this value we could set it to a thousand for example and get this sort of result if you're planning to use lots of grass and having some performance issues you can change the shading model within the material we double click on it have the material itself selected and then we can change the shading model to be from default lid to two-sided foliage or alternatively we can even go lower and change this two-sided foliage shading model to be unlit entirely this will make sure that the plane is not being affected by the light itself and it'll give us much greater performance however we'd need to change the rgb to go from base color and to be going to emissive color instead with this if we were to click ctrl s to save it out we'd get this sort of a result for the grass which is not bad in itself but it might be a little bit too bright so what we can do is we can go back into the material and manually turn down the lighting itself for the grass. We can do so by adding vector 3 and multiplying it with the color map itself. So for that, we'll need to right click, search for vector 3, sorry for vector 3, constant vector 3, there you go. And we're going to multiply this with the texture map. So if we hold M and click on the graph, then connect vector 3 and RGB colors to multiply and connect this to emissive color. Now since by default this was entirely black, we can go into the constant and upscale this. Now if this was set to a value of 1, so white, this will not have any effect on our grass. But as we go down lower and lower, it will darken up our grass. So now if we, let's say, if we set this to a value of, let's say 0.5, so, and click Ctrl S to save it out, to save out our material, we're going to darken up our grass just like that. So that way we can have more control over the shading of our grass. And that's pretty much it guys, we covered ways for how to make a simple foliage for the grass within Unreal Engine 5 and also how to quickly optimize and fix for creating highly dense grass terrain. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. And I hope you enjoyed the video, we got more 3D related content which you can check out in the description down below. And that's it, thanks for watching.